every year there are seiyuu that out of nowhere start to get exposure. Young, eager seiyuu brimming with raw talent, trying to make a case for themselves and many of those end up impressing everyone. In this episode, and already well into 2021, I'll talk about the male seiyuu rising stars of this year. These are seiyuu that have been putting their all into their singing skills and impressing in every single 2D music project or seiyuu group they are a part of. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyuu Lounge. <laughs> Lounge. I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is 7 rising stars dazzling us with their singing skills in 2021. As the theme of this episode indicates, this covers 7 male seiyuu that are on the rise, be it on demand for 2D music projects or because of their unique qualities, even if quantity is still not there yet for them. This is also a feature that I may start doing yearly, as every year there are new, exciting talents on the rise, especially when it comes to singing. As such, please know that this is a highly subjective episode. Who do I consider a rising star? Say you that are under 30 years old, some are rookies, others already have a couple of years in the Seiyu industry. Therefore, say you that are only now starting to stand out in the industry but are still young as per say you and music industry's standards. Some of these say you already have solo debuts, others, let's be honest, I wish they already had gotten the opportunity to do so, or in case it is still too early, at least are thinking about making a solo debut in the long run. So let's cover those 7 seiyuu I believe should be on your radar because they haven't stopped impressing everyone so far in 2021. Tetsue Sumia For many, Tetsue Sumia is an unknown. And that's because Sumia isn't cast in many anime series. I dare say that out of all rising stars I bring you in this episode, Sumia is the rising talent that has the fewest credits in both anime and 2D music projects. He is part of the Ready Project franchise. He was chosen as the face of the project in 2018. He passed the auditions and was chosen as the leader of Spica and the face of Ready Project. He was chosen as the best singer in the crop of insanely talented rookie seiyuu that made up the cast of Ready Project. And it wasn't a fluke at all that he was chosen for those roles. Although the group started off a bit quietly, they really took off quality-wise later in 2018 and were a force to be reckoned with in 2019. Sumia led the charge and he was impressive. Unfortunately, Ready Project has seen better days and the project is in a weird status. But Sumia didn't let that cripple his career in the Seiyu industry and thus he passed the audition held by Tsuki Pro for its new group, Tobari. He joined the group in 2019 alongside Yoshiki Nakajima, one of the most exciting talents in the music industry among male seiyuu, and Sumia dazzled once again. Tsuki Pro's supergroup Pionix teamed up Tobari and Infinito Zero, and while initially it seemed like both groups wouldn't work well together, truth is everything worked out pretty well, and Sumia was impressing everyone yet again. 2021 kicked off with a lot of quality for Pionix as the group wrapped up its Cross Story CD series and kicked off the Season CD series. And Sumia once again, although subtly, has been really impressive. His singing tone is gentle and carries a lot of warmth to it. His falsetto is delicate, with the right amount of breath in it. He can lower his tone to match Yoshiki Nakajima for Tobari's songs or be an incredibly reliable singer that levels up everyone when it comes for his performances with Pionix. His legato and long notes are consistent. 
with speaker he was energetic and could bring a youthful vibe to his performances. In 2021, although really subtly, Tetsuya Sumia has been showing the aces up his sleeves. He's a talented singer with a lot of room to grow, but already able to impress alongside some of the industry's best singers. I sure hope he continues to get work into the music projects, or even, eventually, a solo debut down the line. I can see that happening before 2026. Jin Ogasawara When it comes to delivering electrifying rock performances, Jin Ogasawara has been one of the most exciting talents to follow. He's grown quite a lot in these past few years, performing with Gyroaxia in the Argonavis from Bang Dream franchise. Yes, in case you haven't noticed, Gyroaxia's powerful and energetic frontman is none other than Ogasawara. Since 2019, Gyroaxia has been rocking everyone with their exciting and fast-paced, at times even aggressive, brand of punk rock. Jean Gasawara's experience with the band has enabled him to grow as a singer. While he did have the energy and was able to pull off screamo and incredibly raw performances, he was still a bit too rough around the edges. He has worked on that in the past couple of years and now he's showing that he can control his emotions when performing and make everything about his performances sound less strained. Although these aren't things that are easy to notice for the casual listener of Jaroaxi's songs, if you pay closer attention, you notice that Ogasawara worked towards making his performances easier to pull off. He didn't lower the quality of his performances though. He learned how to manage those without getting out of breath or risk damaging his vocal cords. That's a massive improvement in my books and it shows maturity as a singer. Ogasawara is not a high note belter, like many of the rising talents in this feature, but he sure packs a punch with each of his performances. He's got a raspy twist to his mid-toned vocals, I dare say from what I've heard so far that Ogasawara is a baritone, and he feeds off the energy of the tracks in order to deliver electrifying performances. His singing tone is also unique, so he also has that to his advantage on the long run. He made his solo debut in 2021 with the digital single Only One Thing, and while it seemed like a rushed solo debut, something that I talked about with more detail on episode 50, he's got a nostalgic brand of pop punk meets electro rock going on. That's also another unique thing that works to his favor. And for his solo career, he showed a more melodic side, bringing falsetto, ad-libs and vibrato into the mix. Jin Ogasawara is rock frontman material and, in my opinion, he does have a bright future ahead of him. Hinata Tadokoro You can never go wrong with 81 produces Say You when it comes to singing. The talent agency has focused on gathering a lot of multi-talented CU that are well versed in singing and at times even music composition. And every year, 81 produces rookie CU, showcase their skills and they are almost always on a level that makes a lot of jaws drop. Hinata Tadokoro is such talent. He's a low baritone or a high bass singer with a deep, warm voice and a lot of technique. He can tap into baritone or even faux tenor territory. Although extremely underrated and still not on the radar for many of you, Hinata Tadokoro has the makings of a vocal powerhouse. He's got a massive vocal range from bass up to faux tenor, is able to pull off spine-chilling high notes and powerful low ones, can do falsetto and has a sweet vibrato. He adds a lot of emotion to his performances, making those engaging. In my opinion, Hinata Tadokoro is a vastly improved version, albeit a bit older, of Shunsuke Takeuchi, another vocal powerhouse from 81 Produce. Tadokoro is starting to make heads turn with his performances as part of Infinito Zero, Pionix, and most recently, Neo Basara in the Fabulous Night franchise. 
His long notes and legato, the vocal range and singing technique are impressive, and his composure and charisma as a singer, when he's in very few projects, lead me to think that Hinata Tadokoro can turn into a star in the future. At least, I'd love for that to actually happen to him. He's got a lot of talent and technique that are ready to be unleashed in many more 2D music projects. Shoya Chiba Easily one of the biggest up-and-coming talents among Sayu is Shoya Chiba. He's got quite the unusual path in the Sayu industry with several hiatuses early on in his career and with a parallel career as a live-action actor, but in the past couple of years he's managed to find his groove and went from an unknown Sayu to one that people look forward to both in anime but also in the music industry. Shoyachiba has a background of playing guitar and singing for rock bands, is a music geek with a deep knowledge of music and its history, and to top it all off, is a singer-songwriter. He's also a tenor with quite a lot of low range to himself. You won't normally find him belting high notes, but he can sure as hell provide a lot of depth to a group's performances or make chills run down your spine if performing a solo track. He's got a nasally twist to his performances that has toned down quite a lot over the years. He's best known as the leader of Killer King in B Project, as well as leader of High Joker in the Idol Master Side M franchise. Those were his first ever exposures to working as part of a 2D music group. However, he's come a long way since his shaky performances lacking emotion back in 2015. You could tell he was not comfortable. You could tell that he was still trying to find a way to convey the character's emotions without compromising quality in his performances. He was figuring himself out as a singer as well as a voice actor performing character songs. As a result of overthinking and lacking confidence, most of his work early on with Killer King was seriously lacking anything that would make him stand out positively. However, things started to change around 2018, when Chiba started to show vast improvements to his singing technique, a lot of emotion and power, not to mention an impressive energy and charisma on stage. He joined Kashkomi in 2018 alongside Shonogami and the popular Seiyu unit Spark Lou. He's versatile, he can perform rock, ballads, dance music and bubbly pop. He can rock the stage as well as dance pretty well. His voice can be soft and warm, melancholic and somber, bubbly and upbeat or raw and aggressive. Chiba has the perfect voice tone for it, he's a tenor and he's managed to perfect the way he tackles his performances as well as polish this technique, bringing a lot of falsetto and some bits of vibrato into the mix. He's starting to show the makings of a vocal chameleon. Shoya Chiba polished his vocals and technique and in 2019 he was in his groove. Since then, he's been a delight to follow and has been on the rise, being one of the most sought-after young talents in the Sayu industry when it comes to 2D music projects. Since then, he's turned into the poster boy for the Carnelian Blood, Perfection Noise, Visual Prison and Tokyo Color Sonic franchises. Those are four of the highest profile 2D or mixed media franchises that were launched in 2020 and 2021. That's aggressive rock with screamo dance music with R&B and pop in the mix, visual K rock and pop rock. That's Shuya Chiba once again showing that he's got the talent and versatility that justify him being the face and voice of those projects. In one year, everyone's eyes and ears are on Shoya Chiba, a CUN singer that does not settle for OK. He wants more and always pushes the boundaries in order to impress his fans. Is that one CU that I seriously hope will end up making a solo debut? Just look at him playing guitar on stage. His smile beams. 
He loves music and it seriously shine as a solo artist. He's already got plenty of the things needed to make that happen and for his solo debut to be successful. Out of all Seiyu in this list, Shuyachiba is the one that can properly be called a rising star, given how many high-profile 2D music projects he's a face of, as well as how in demand he is for plenty of other music projects. Is the glue that groups need, is the power and grit that rock bands thrive from, is the chameleon that can dance and sing with a lot of confidence. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Shun Horie. In the same note as Shuya Chiba comes Shun Horie. First off, his singing tone is otherworldly. He's a raspy and warm high tenor, something I believe I'd never heard before. Well, that's up until I came across Horie in the Vez Rock franchise in 2018. But there's more to his singing than what is usually known. He's versatile, incredibly so. He can be there belting high notes with anthos, adding an alluring twist to his lower raspy tones with Vezzy, or just sounding downright cute in Byte's songs. He can add a lot of flair and elegance to group songs like is shown with Spark Clue. He can drive a song be the glue to a group and absolutely mesmerize you with his performances. His singing is filled with life. You want to just sit back and give him all your attention as soon as he starts singing. Horie is one of the most complete up-and-coming talents in the CU industry when it comes to singing. He's got the composure and comfort on record and stage. He knows his limits on the vocal end, as well as makes the best out of his strengths in effortless fashion. And recently, he vastly improved his looks. Do you see where I'm getting to? Shun Horie has the talent to warrant a solo debut. He's incredibly versatile and has a unique voice tone. If he wants to actually do something in his own name, Something as personal as a solo debut, it would be more than deserved. And that's because as soon as you listen to him, you notice just how impressive he is as a singer. I've said it plenty of times, I'd be all in for a solo debut of his. If you haven't checked Shun Horia's singing, I thoroughly welcome you to do it. Gakto Kajiwara as far as rising talents in this list go, Gakuto Kajiwara was the first one to make a solo debut. And he didn't even have much work to his name to warrant a solo debut. If you're not familiar with him, Kajiwara is best known for voicing Asta in the Black Clover anime series. Yes, he sounds incredibly different when he sings, that will be your first shock, especially if you are familiar with his voice in that anime series, but haven't checked how he normally sounds like. For those familiar with 2D music projects, Gakuto Kajiwara is the face of the Paradox Live franchise as the leader of Bay Suzaku. The project was launched in 2019 and since then Kajiwara has made it a trend to impress fans of the project with his perfect English pronunciation and an awesome rap flow in both English and Japanese not to mention his singing skills when there are chorus parts that require the group to sing instead of rapping. Still in the same year, Gakuto Kajiwara joined the Ensemble Stars franchise as a member of the popular group Alkaloid. In 2020, Kajiwara joined Epsilon Phi as the second vocal and more recently, in 2021, he joined the Pythagoras production franchise as a member of Golden Record. Kajiwara has been on a high demand for 2D music projects much due to his rising popularity from his work in the Paradox Live franchise. And as such, in 2020 he signed with Avex Pictures, making his solo debut in the same year with the single A Walk. In that single, he showed that there was more to himself than just the pop and hip-hop he'd been performing in the past couple of years. He ended up delivering a single that explored pop rock and acoustic ballads. He showcased his vocal prowess by delivering emotional performances in both 
displaying a technique and control that are striking, especially to find in a Seiyuu that was with only three years of career as Seiyuu when he made his solo debut. Although I do believe his solo debut was rushed, there's no denying that Gakuto Kajiwara is a talented singer, still with a lot of room to grow and improve. He's got a bright future ahead of him, that's for sure. Yuki Sakakihara a pure tenor with four baritone range in the mix, Yuki Sakakihara has been responsible for making jaws drop in no since 2018. Most of you will be familiar with his work as part of Badass Temple in the Hypnosis Mike franchise, or even as the frontman for the electro rock band Epsilon Phi. However, he first started to showcase his singing skills and unique crystal clear singing tone around 2018 as the center for La Verita in the Ready Project franchise. Is one of the rookie talents that 81 produced bet a whole lot in 2018. Sakakihara does have a really unique singing tone. He has a really good control over his singing tone, has a clean delivery, his technique is second to none and his emotions overflow in each of his performances. He's genuinely good at conveying emotions and making the listener care for what he is singing. In a way, there is a certain dramatic and theatrical touch to his performances that always makes him stand out. He can sing really high with a clarity that impresses. He can go as low as for baritone, a skill that is useful for visual K rock artists. And he can be as cheerful and upbeat as you ask of him. He's versatile, overflowing with energy and a want to impress. He's a diamond in the rough with a strong core skill set as a singer. In the past couple of years, he's joined a couple of high-profile 2D music franchises, namely the Hypnosis Mike franchise and Argonavis from Bang Dream. He's also joined Undead Anthem, the EDM-centric franchise, and is showcasing his versatility in all those projects as he raps, sings, and delivers banger after banger. Sakakihara is a rising star with a bright future ahead, especially taking into account how it is rare to find among Seiyuu high tenors that are good singers and have a lot of control. These were my 7 picks of rising stars among male Seiyuu that have been dazzling with their skills in 2021. As you can tell, the newest generation of Seiyuu joining the music industry, those born in the mid and late 90s, is really exciting and filled with talent. There's a good balance between tenors, bass and baritones, which is also exciting to hear. In the past five years, many of the names I mentioned have been showing their cards in the music industry, with outstanding performances as part of 2D music projects or Seiyuu units, Others have gotten their opportunities to shine on their own and deliver an even more natural and intimate set of performances that best highlight their talents and passions. The future is bright for every single rising star in this episode. And these are the Seiyuu that I suggest you to follow as well, because it has been exciting to follow their growth throughout the years. Listening to their improvements with each song that is released noticing how comfortable they get with time when they are performing live, experiencing them, challenging themselves in music genres and with unique performances that no one expected of them. It has been pretty awesome to follow the careers of these seven rising stars, and because of that, in this episode I gave you some reasons to justify why you should care and give them a chance to see what they are doing. After all, around 10 years time, they will be the stars taking over the music industry by storm, either as solo artists or part of Seiyuu units or bands. Now tell me, who are the male Seiyuu rising stars on your radar? What do you like about them? Who, out of the CU I talked about, do you think will turn into a star in the future? 
let me know in the comments. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Say You Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail say you and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.